I was invited to Poland to take part in a rather impressive live-action role-play event. It was called Fairweather Manor and was marketed as inspired by the British television series Downton Abbey. One major attraction was the spectacular venue, Mojna Castle. We were sent a list of characters to pick from, all created by the organisers, and I ended up with the part of Hollywood movie star Harold Lockwood. Of course, my close friends call me Harry. I packed a lot of reasonably suitable clothes, I have a lot of 1920s and 30s kit for swing dances, and arrived ready for the training sessions on the Thursday afternoon. These taught us the conventions of the game, such as the safety phrase, THINK OF THE FAMILY, which was an in-character way of ending something that was going in a bad direction. I'm here with my family, uh, that is the performing troupe. So all the various uh, players have been assigned to a family. They might be the Russians or the Belgians, and in my case, it's the performance troupe. And uh, here's the rest of the performance troupe, and this is the Gaiety Theatre. Yes, yes, the new theatre. And so we've just been discussing uh, what our characters' hopes and dreams and fears are and so forth, and what our happy memories were, and what our sad memories were, and uh, people that we may have lost during the Great War, and you know, all that sort of stuff, and try to work out how much we know about each other and help each other to achieve in-character goals. Uh, that's dramatic goals rather than sort of actual life goals. So it could be that um, one of you wants to be unlucky in love because that would be dramatic. And so we'll, we'll, we'll help her to be unlucky in love. Yeah. Honestly, those three, I couldn't get a word in edgeways sometimes. The groups then introduce themselves to the other groups. My brother is a great scientist who goes to Africa and stuff. We have the uh, Duke, uh, the Drunken Duke, as the Drunken Duke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then we have our reluctant heir. Uh, the Bella Brother died. The Bella Brother died. Oh. Uh, Cross group connections were then concocted, and then we were introduced to our servants. We don't have any servants. We, we actually don't have any servants. <laughs> or at least some of us were. There was a dance class and a rehearsal dinner, which was particularly important for the people playing the servants who were going to serve us several formal meals. These are dark times. France is a battlefield where countless waves of men fight and die. Endless trenches are bombarded by endless artillery. Further afield, nations tremble. In Russia, the imperial government has seized power from the Tsar and the aristocracy wait to learn their fate. In Ireland, still part of the British Empire, door whispers of resentment. Right, it's the end of the preparatory day. I've had my training, I think I know what I'm doing, and I'm now about to go to sleep, and when I wake up, it's time in. Time in. I was awoken in an unusual way by the sounds of fencing on the terrace. This lady was playing an Olympic hopeful. She just had to look the part, and she did. Good morning. Good morning. After a lavish breakfast, there was a morning memorial service for all those fallen in the war. So many names read out of this parish. Oscar Bartlett of this parish. Harry Kane of this parish. The chap playing the vicar was absolutely spot on, more convincing than most real vicars. He did have the advantage of playing his own nationality, which most people were not. There was a full day ahead, the weekend being divided into dramatic acts, and there was a menu of many in-period activities to keep the guests of the Duke suitably entertained. Okay, David. Thank you, Captain. So how's the sights? Uh, shooting to the right, so aim maybe about an inch left. good, although three big sit-down multi-course meals per day was a bit much for me. It seems that nobles in this period spent a lot of time getting ready for and then eating meals. There was a full hour set aside for dressing for dinner, 
One impressive thing was the stealthy way wine glasses were refilled, even when away from the table. At least twice I looked away from my glass, then back to see that it was full again. And I had seen nothing. The reason our characters were gathered was a wedding. The Duke's daughter was marrying an Anglo-Irish character. I wasn't at the hen party the night before, but I can report that there was high drama at the stag party. So don't you tell me where I am now! Don't you tell me where I am now! You know nothing! One thing I think the servants must have been taught is the walk. This made a huge difference. From half a mile away, with just a glimpse, I could tell a servant from a noble by this. The servants walked stiff-backed, eyes forward and not swinging the arms. They politely gave way to the nobles. And the sight of a huge line of servants not looking at me and not expecting to be looked at was very impressive. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and the original... Yes. The people playing the nobles had paid a lot more to take part, but those playing the servants mostly seemed convinced that they were having more fun. They had their own characters to play, in a large team with a lot of camaraderie. The nobles were briefed to gossip in front of the servants, and the servants then were to spread that gossip. Many were running secret errands for their masters, and there was at least as much romance downstairs as up. Normally, LARP games have a group goal, a common enemy to be defeated or mystery to be solved, and in those, some characters naturally end up being the stars of the show and get to do the most, while others end up as sidekicks or even spectators. With no group goal, as here, each character then becomes the star of his own personal story. You end up concentrating on how your character is feeling, and this can end up being a far more moving experience than the usual defeat the baddie quest. My character was written for me, uh, but I did make a, a major tweak to him. Uh, he was Harold Lockwood, and he was a Hollywood movie star. And on the page, I thought he was a well-rounded and interesting character, but he was American, and I thought it might be more interesting if he was actually born in Britain, which is the way I played it, um, and that he was more of a fake and more aware that he was a fake. He was from a large family that was back in Britain and he'd lost contact with them and so I had motives, for instance, for talking to people, trying to work out if I wanted to uh, track down some family who were lost, for instance, uh, how would I do, uh, do this? And uh, a lot of people were starting to twig that the, you know, possibly I was asking for myself and, and I don't know that anyone actually ever put it all together and decided, oh, I think that guy's actually secretly English. But it was great for me because of all the internal struggles that I was having. So when I met someone else who was actually British and he was pretending to be French, I was so conflicted and it was really interesting because I met him and he was a fraud and I knew that I, secretly I was sort of a fraud even though I'm now an American citizen, but he was an unapologetic, smiling fraud who was, who was sponging off others and I started to really hate him and then that then started me, making me loathe myself as well. And, and, uh, the, the, the complexity of that situation, which all, was all happening inside my head, uh, was wonderful and uh, it was quite an experience. So I was, for a while, uh, Harry Lockwood. Another thing about this game format is that often the highlights are scenes played to an audience of one. When the aristocrats were with their servants dressing for dinner, I found a pool table and soon was joined by one of the Russian characters. We then played a game of pool, entirely in character. My character, Harry, was a great believer in the project that was America, and this was the scene in which I made my big speech about this. In other LARPs, I might have thought this wasted on just one person, but here, it didn't matter because, in a sense, I was making the speech to myself. <laughs> The wedding went off fairly hitch-free in the end, and the bride was suitably radiant. Suddenly, people took the opportunity to live life a bit faster than the norm. I lost count of the number of engagements made and then broken off. In the event, there were two weddings, one happening in secret late one night, quite unscripted. One more unusual thing was that the LARP ended on such a low note. 
I think fireworks may have been spoiled for me for a while because as I stood there on that beautiful terrace with all those beautifully dressed people watching the beautiful fireworks, the whole mood of the crowd was shot through with a profound gloom. Half the men in the palace had just been given their call-up papers. Several women were in tears. Men with shell shock flinched subtly with each bang, one making a quiet and dignified exit back into the house. No one overacted. The men had quiet, sombre conversations amongst themselves. It ended on a massive downer. But it seems that we all love a good tragedy. Think back on the laughter and the tears, the hope and the fear, the sounds and the silence and the light and the darkness that was Fairweather Manor. And thank you all very, very much.